Little pain the thug, I'm the saddest out And my trap, so it's in the drought Got no bed, sleep on the couch Still a thug, so better watch him out The two sad crew up in the house Shed some tears up in your spouse Find teardrops all on the blouse Shedding tears, what I'm about Drop tears from the north to the south Yeah, I cry and I pout So sad my mama kicked me out Real tears of a thug without a doubt <laughs> So sad my mama kicked me out Real tears of a thug without a doubt Still got no bread, nigga. Just shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head. Still got no bread, nigga. Just shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head. Just shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head. Just shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head, shaking my head. Just shaking my head. Good evening, you rowdy, rowdy boys. My name's Noah. This is Brian, and we are here with yet another wonderful episode of Just Like Family. The only, <laughs> I like the tiny cheer there, you know, you're, you're our biggest fan and that's uh, the best thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, the only podcast that combines alcoholism with Undercover Boss, the hit ABC show, NBC, something like that. I don't know. I got to look it up. I, want, I should probably know more about the subject nah. about it. No, just, just kind of wing it. Yeah. So, uh. If you were familiar with our last episode, you'll know the game here, but if you are just joining us now, here's the plan. We watch an episode of the classic reality TV show Undercover Boss every week, and we have also established a drinking game to go along with that viewing experience, uh, the rules of which you'll be able to find in the additional info about the video uh, below. Uh, and today, uh, I got this bottle. We have, uh, well, you go for it. You go for it, Brian. You introduce us to this. So, uh, it's called Black Velvet. It's a Canadian blended whiskey. And uh, it was on sale. So I don't even know if it was on sale. I think it just might be that cheap and shitty, man. Oh, Jesus. Well, it's like, I, I feel like I've heard of Black Velvet before as being one of those, like, top-of-the-bottom-shelf things. Oh. Um, so it's like okay whiskey. It's probably acceptable. I mean, I had like a mixed drink with it yesterday, but I mean, we're going to do a shot to open things up, so yeah. I don't know how that's going to go. Probably awful. I mean, it's a it's a 40%. It's imported for all the way from Canada. It was uh, $11.49. <laughs> so uh, it was uh, blended at birth, distilled, and aged three years in oak under the supervision of the Canadian government, which is... I, you know, is, is the Canadian government really known for very exacting standards on their spirits or something? Uh, Age three years. All right. So, yeah, we've got a, we've got a shitty whiskey. We're actually going to be doing uh, whiskey sours tonight because I actually bothered to get a mixer that you like this time. <laughs> is that is that your just, like, preferred whiskey drink? Oh, uh, whiskey sour? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because I could do Jack and Coke and, like... Cook yeah. whiskey and that's fine. The only thing is that basically, like the day after, my body just goes into like complete shutdown mode where like <laughs> I can't do basic functions at all. Well, that's because you don't drink soda at all, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the soda. It's not the whiskey. It's like the whiskey's like, all right, yeah, I'm just a fucking regular. Do you think it's just the sugar? Because I feel like the sweet and sour mix has a ton of sugar in it too. Uh, no, I think it has like something to do with like the mix between like the carbonation, like the massive amounts of sugar that it has, or the caffeine because you don't really drink a lot of coffee nah. either. So, oh, well, it can be anything. All right, let's uh, pour up our starter shots, uh, yeah. as, as though we're not going to be fucked up enough just from the rules here. Uh, oh, speaking of which, today's episode, uh, first episode was Popeyes. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of a boring one, but still an illuminating experience. Today we are going with Baja Fresh. Uh, I've seen the episode before, Brian has, not I am the experienced uh, undercover boss connoisseur. So hopefully we'll have a good experience with that. What a bad shot? That looked like a bad shot. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So what the hell is Baja Fresh? Well, you're just going to have to find out. It's, it's a knockoff Chipotle. Oh. <laughs> I believe. Anyway, so let's uh, give it that smell. Ooh, it's got a... That's just nothing but alcohol. Yeah. That's just like smelling fucking rubbing alcohol, man. That's... I was going to say, it smells like a hospital. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, you know how we have to introduce these things on three. Let's say our favorite phrase. One, two, three. Just, Just like, like family. family. And let's do it. 
Yep. Tastes just like ice smells. That's not that bad. No. Like, uh... That's <coughs> kind of an aftertaste to it, though. It, it's very... It's like oaky. It's very astringent. It's very, uh... Very boozy. Like, even more than the higher proof stuff we've had yeah. before, but... It doesn't have that, like, really painful aftertaste of, like, the Devil's Cut from oh, the last yeah. time. So, yeah, pretty smooth. Now let's, uh... Okay. Drink about 12 more of those and see what we think. Uh, we will be back in just a moment after we have viewed Undercover Boss Baja Fresh. Ken was very quiet and stiff at the beginning, but then after like he got on the line, Ken started to sweat. Ken started to see what we did when we took our break. Then Ken sat down and you could just see his face like, ugh. And you know what, that's, the, that's what we go through every day here. As soon as we get any, like a five minute break, we sit down, we just, you know, recuperate, we gather up our thoughts and our feelings and then go back to work and finish out the shift. And we are back after viewing uh, today's episode, the Baja Fresh episode of Undercover Boss. And uh, Brian, what did you think about today's episode? <sighs> Fucking... <laughs> I did not like it at all. <laughs> you weren't a fan of uh, David Kim, or as you described him. Oh, a.k.a. Baby Back Bitch. Yeah, Baby yeah. Back Bitch is a pretty good way to describe. And then this will this whole link up pretty well. Uh, what do you think we got hit on the most in our drinking game? Oh, Baby Back Bitch crying all the fucking time. Yes, we get... I You know, I specifically... Having seen about half the series, just yeah. in fits and starts, uh, I definitely geared our drinking game with certain episodes in mind. This was definitely one that made uh, someone crying on camera a single drink. I'm pretty sure crying uh, killed us through our first mis- our first mixed drink. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that probably alone composed... That and sad stories made up a single drink. Yeah. I mean, like... He doesn't understand that everybody has their own issues, and he, you don't have to cry about all of them. It's like, you know what? Like the whole point of fucking life, you gotta overcome all this dumb shit. Everybody has their yeah. dumb issues. It's very hard. Okay, okay. So uh, backing up. So uh, who we're talking about? David Kim, uh, at least at the time of this uh, this episode airing, was uh, the CEO of Baja Fresh, a company we don't know anything about. Uh, we, we, apparently, it. Based on the context of the show, it looks like... West Coast? I think it might be West Coast. I think it might be, like, California. California, Center. Arizona, because remember, there was one that was... Yeah, they were in Mesa. Arizona. Yeah. So it might just be, like, West Coast stuff. And obviously, we're here in Tampa, Florida. But it looks like a, basically a, a Chipotle knockoff with a little bit more of an emphasis on healthy stuff, maybe? No. No? Dude, it's like a shitty Moe's. Yeah, yeah. Which is... Because- like, all right, so, like, what they emphasize the most every time you're in the fucking... Every time they're in, like, he switched from, like, one thing to another is the, um, the verde sauce. The verde sauce and the freshness of the ingredients. Yeah. And how none of it is prepackaged. They make it all from scratch. How do you make chicken from scratch? Uh, well, their ability to put seasoning on it and then put it on a grill is apparently oh, a man. really high watermark for fast, casual dining. Dude, what there. a fucking... What a novel concept. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, David Kim, um, it's really weird uh, and hard to get a beat on him as, like, a character in the show, you He's know? He's not a character. No one... Dude, we've already seen, like, three or four episodes of this show. Yeah. All right, so two before we did this and then two after. Yeah. Once we started doing this, I don't think anybody there is a... Is a fucking character at that point like they're just kind of robots just going through the motions well i mean i mean a character in terms of like his role in the episode you know it, it's hard to get a bead on because here's the thing so kim is as you said a crybaby bitch he cries <laughs> at the drop of a hat over anyone's most innocuous stories <laughs> of of hardship like uh that one like uh the spanish twink like his heart-wrenching story of having to leave home uh, from his mom and his brother oh, no. at 20 years old and it's like I thought that was called moving out and being a grown up but yeah. apparently apparently it's it's a sad story yeah it's, it, yeah, it's just full oh, of grief shit. and sad musical cues and shit it's amazing oh shit who would have thought oh fuck yeah I had to move away from my mom and brother and I yeah. had to like start life on my own 
Okay, dude, I'm sorry. Yeah. Apparently, it's a big deal. Well, I mean, it brings it brings Kim not only to tears, but to get him to pray with that employee. <sighs> David Kim is uh, a Korean Christian who, or definitely an especially weird variety of Christian, from my experience. Um, <laughs> and he feels the need to bring this up and emphasize it. Oh, that he's all a Christian. O- all over the place in the show, yeah. So he stumbles across the one other Christian he manages to find his employees, and boy does he take a shine to him in a creepy grooming way. I, did I describe it as grooming almost? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so I just God damn it, Brian, stop moving the cable and ruining this it's two hard. episodes in a row. All right. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So uh, yeah, David Kim uh, with his weird grooming and his obsession with Christianity uh, equaled only to his obsession with crying. Um, it just it really it it creates the sense of a guy who was never cut out for the corporate world. Like, how did he get there? Uh, I know he describes it a little bit at the beginning, but oh, by the way, you know what's fucked up? We never did our drinks for uh, corporate nepotism with his brother also working at the oh, company. Shit, yeah, that's right. So we missed a couple there, but whatever. Fuck it, we got drunk enough. Dude, I don't even know how he got it to begin with. I think. Um because he mentions like, oh yeah, making Mexican <clears throat> making Mexican food, but as an Asian guy, as an yeah. Asian guy, it's like they call me the Taco King or the <laughs> I don't think anyone calls you the Taco King. <laughs> maybe maybe if you were the CEO of Taco Bell, but definitely not Baja Fresh, <sighs> uh, a place with like forty locations that none of us have heard of. Ah. So I don't know. The, 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 the whole fucking episode was a huge question mark because I don't know what the fuck this dude was going on about. Didn't it, it didn't this episode feel like uh, like it had gotten more chopped up in editing than usual? Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. That's that's what makes it like all the more confusing. And trust me, I like I get confused <laughs> by the simp- like by the simplest things and like if I'm confused from like beginning to end, then there's a serious issue. Like if I'm a little bit confused, like okay, then it's a good episode. It felt like, it felt like it, you know, in the gutter, you know, between the scenes and shit, that the camera crew and whoever's directing it had to like get Kim to do shit. I think they chopped and edited because he cried so much and like they couldn't <laughs> fucking get anything. Well, like that's you another know, another possibility. Yeah, yeah, like you know, like if you had like someone like. Someone who just perpetually cries and like they just have like the five-year-old uh, I'm crying sound like. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my 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 favorite Kim thing is uh, to say, I, I I need a moment, guys, to the camera crew. <laughs> like you you need a fucking moment to what? Cry your feelings out and then get back to it. How the fuck do you handle high-level business dealings? If you can't even hear the terrifying idea of your employees having to move away from home. You see, now, right? he, now, now here's the fucking... This is what I think. This is my theory behind it. I think the brother is actually the CEO. But they <laughs> thought it would be a better camera to have the shitty brother pretend like he's the CEO. I can kind of see that because the, the little bit that we saw of the brother in the board... He seemed competent. Like, he seemed much more stable. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed... Like less yeah. emotionally labile. <laughs> Instead of like pretending to be like, oh yeah, we just play ping pong in the driveway. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely that was that pro that scene was probably worth ten drinks on its own. Yeah. So near the oh. en- near the end of the show, uh, Kim is reunited with his family after having learned a little bit about life, a little bit about love, and a lot about tacos. Oh. Uh, they, they, they bring him back to his home and to show to show the relationship he has with his family and how nice it is. It shows them playing ping pong, but the ping pong table is set up in the driveway of his fucking house next the, to the car. The kids don't even look happy fucking playing uh, dude, ping there's, pong. Dude, obviously they just dragged that ping pong table out <laughs> for that shot. It was like, and I want to know who suggested that. I, I want to know who is like, oh, no, this is really going to tie it together. We're going to have these guys play fucking ping pong in the driveway. That's what poor people do, right? Yeah. They play ping pong in the driveway. They that's, play- like the, that's what the fucking workers do, right? Yeah. That's what our work does. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, just... But honestly, apart from Kim's crying, like, just intensely boring. You got to think about it really hard. What is it? It's like, all right, like... 
like they try to like I, like I, I feel like part of the editing is the uh, part of the fact that I think it's basically like what they're missing yeah is what makes more of the story like I'm pretty sure like part of it is that he kind of works so much for the company that he doesn't have time for the kids so it's like oh let's pretend like he has to act like an actual family when the reality of the situation is is the kids will probably see him as much at all I, you know, I, I can see that, but I can also see a reversal also being plausible. That it's like they want the narrative to be, oh, he was working so hard and now he's finally realized the importance of family. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, no. Like, you got, you got to think about this. No, the TV sense, yeah. Yeah, you got to think about it definitely in terms of, like, the narrative that they're trying to to push forward with this shit. And, but the weird thing is, with Kim, there's no arc. Because at the very beginning, Kim is, you know, all upset over the fact that his insanely elderly parents are dying. Oh, the mom's already dead. Yeah, the mom's already dead, and his, his dad's Dad on the way out. supposedly up. has six months, and for whatever reason, they decided that, oh, yeah, it's okay, let's show this on fucking camera, like, it's yeah. not good in the hood. But the thing is, like, it would be one thing if the arc was, oh, Kim doesn't appreciate it at first, and then he grows to appreciate it. But it's like, no, Kim is a crybaby about his billion-year-old father dying. Like, which which isn't to say that you can't be sad about it, but at a certain point, you gotta expect it to happen. <laughs> I mean, Kim is probably, what, in his 40s? I'm 28, and I'm pretty comfortable with saying, oh, you know, my dad's approaching his upper 60s now. So... Yeah, he's probably yeah. gonna die pretty soon. That's that's how life works. It's like yeah. with my dad, it's like oh, like he's probably in his seventies. He's gonna croak at some point. <laughs> but but Kim is treating it like he's fucking fourteen. Uh, yeah, it's like oh shit, my, my parents like, again. That's like, dude, they're gonna go away. Like you know, this is gonna happen. Well, there's there's also uh, they definitely want to put. Okay, this is another thing that I think was lost in editing. You know the couple mentions that Kim makes about his, like, fraught relationship with his father when he was younger and shit? Yeah. He mentions it at the beginning, and then he mentions it before he has that weird meeting with his, his dad. dad yeah. um, so I think that that was... They were attempting to make an arc out of that, but they just couldn't get enough usable material. So all you're seeing <laughs> is just, like, the, the fucking content that they didn't remove from that storyline. I can see. I, I, I could totally see that. I also think, like, after they recorded, they were like, why the fuck? Fuck! Did we even do this to begin <laughs> with? Because that's the thing, Kim. Kim cries a shit ton, but he doesn't do anything else. <laughs> he doesn't prove himself competent as a CEO. He's he's blown away by the very idea of his place doing catering. Like, <laughs> dude, he's barely a man. <laughs> he's he's barely alive. You know, like like Kim is just. Walking dead through all yeah. the scenes, just periodically crying Ooh. for the camera. It's like, yeah, like dude, I'm pretty sure dude's been dead since his mid thirties. Just kind of like going through the motions of life. Oh god, hey, Kim is Kim is a fucking disaster, and honestly, all the employees are too. There's not really any compelling stories among I, them. I I don't think if you go to any place where if you're a fucking mid. Not, let's say late 20s. Yeah. Let's be reasonable. <laughs> let's say late 20s, still working at a fucking fast food place. Dude, your life has probably gone to shambles. Excuse me, it's not fast food, it's fast casual. Oh, shit, that's right. Because none of it's pre-packed. Yeah, Remember, yeah, 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 yeah. remember that. Yeah, that, it's that, always fresh. The, like the Wendy's. Mo the, most, <laughs> the most intense enthusiasm you will ever see from uh, Kim that isn't related to crying is his insistence that Baja Fresh is not fast food. Oh, shit. How did it is a fast, that? casual Mexican experience. It was mentioned Thank you. for like half the fucking show. <laughs> yeah. That and making the salsa verde. Making the they, salsa verde, yes. Yeah, the making the salsa verde was featured in every single one. Little, of, yeah, yeah, and every like commercial. Yeah, yeah. They, they want to emphasize. They got the fresh you, salsa verde. Did you, did, did you know in Baja Fresh it makes salsa verde? As though it's like this. Intensely convoluted <laughs> thing to make. As though there's anything in Mexican food, period, that is like just a, a, a laborious process. <laughs> you know? Uh, dude, I wish they had something in the menu that was just basically salsa verde. Just fucking. <laughs> <laughs> just slap a thing of salsa verde in your plate. No, you don't even use a plate, just throw it on the fucking table like an animal. <laughs> you know? It's like. It, I, I, that's the thing that always blows my mind. All these fucking fast casual restaurants 
if they're sit down or if they're pseudo fast food like Baja Fresh, it doesn't matter. I always talk about how they pride themselves on the freshness of the ingredients. It's like, I would, okay, I would fucking hope so. I would hope that your food is fresh as a consumer. That's not a reward. This, you know, you know like, what? I don't even give a fuck if it's fresh. Like, at least make it semi-fresh. I don't want my food fucking rotting. Like, you know what? Like, the reality situation is like, all right, like, uh, I don't know how you lived, obviously, but I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know how you. I want to see where this leads. I don't know how you lived nah, your dude, life. Like, you know what? No, nah, like. No, go, go ahead. Fucking like you know like I'm used to having like two or three day old chicken just like, which is fine. Like, as long I never as it's got, refrigerated, yeah. fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I've never got sick off of it. Like it doesn't bother me. So I'm like. It doesn't have to be fresh. It could be semi-fresh. As long as, you know, you can taste the meat and not taste like the refrigerator burn. No, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, the thing is, like, <laughs> if I'm going to your restaurant, whatever type it is, I assume that it's fresh. And I don't suspect different until you start overemphasizing how <laughs> fresh it is. <laughs> Oh yeah, the more he says it, the less I think it's It's like fresh. you're definitely not getting that easy bake oven for Christmas. <laughs> I know, I know. He asked about in those letters to Santa. It's just not in the fucking cards. All right. Like, um, of course, you're just going to anticipate that that oven, that bitch of an oven, is going to be waiting underneath okay. the tree for you. Oh, uh, just just to make sure that you that you're well aware. Yeah. Did you know in Baja Fresh, uh, everything uh, is made? Yeah, is made, made right fresh. on the yeah, right yeah, yeah. On the made, premises. made right on the premises. Yeah. It's. Just, well, here's the thing, though. It's also like you're you're a fucking Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. What, 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 what ingredients would you have in your cooler that you would freeze that you can't get rid of? Because all Mexican food involves like the same seven ingredients. Well, you yeah. can constantly rotate that shit. Well, like cheese, ch or any sort of protein, which would be cheese or uh, chicken. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, like uh, lettuce, tomato, onion, uh, cilantro, uh, basic herbs and stuff. And tortilla. And tortilla and uh, guacamole. All of that shit so is like... All of that shit is like incorporated in every dish. Just made differently. So it, it's not like, oh yeah, we've got all this Mexican... But then we've got this prime rib on the menu. People don't order it very often. <laughs> so we keep that in the freezer until someone asks. No, it's, it's fucking... Of course it's going to be fresh. It's all easy to rotate stock that's on everything. That doesn't mean anything. Like I would... For God's sake, I would hope you don't freeze your shredded cheese. <laughs> Because if you are, that means that your place is doing terrible business. Yeah, it's or maybe they just over ordered so much fucking three blended cheese from <laughs> the place in the West Coast that's similar to Publix here. Oh no, it's it's, it's just from uh, oh God, what's that giant fucking restaurant provider out there? Ah um, oh, man, I'm totally blanking. Someone posted in the comments. You know what I'm talking about? Giant provider of. 90% of the restaurant food on the fucking country. Uh, anyway, yeah. So, I mean, that's like, that's the dirty secret of restaurants. Yeah. It's like 90% of their stock, unless they're very specifically going to local places, are getting them from the same maybe three companies. Oh, I'm sure. Your it's, steak is coming, no matter where you go, your steak's coming from the same place. Yeah. It's the like glasses. Same. Yeah, yeah. Like glasses, but the, the yeah, one, it's like ninety yeah, percent glasses are owned by the same like Italian. Yeah, it's company. The, the Italian yeah. company. The one Italian company uh, makes Ray Bans, uh, makes Oakleys, Oakley. Makes, yeah, yeah, they make everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it, it's exactly the same in the restaurant industry. Like, well, you have the one or three bullshit. Yeah, you get one or three huge companies, and probably a bunch of smaller ones that are just operating under the umbrella of those larger companies and everything, and. Yeah, I mean, but, but that's fine because the food is all right. Mm -hmm. I, like, I've never had an issue with that. So the constant emphasis in these restaurants of, uh, of fresh ingredients and stuff. First of all, you're a fucking chain. You're not going to the farmer's market. Yeah. All right. We, 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 we know perfectly well that you're not doing that. So don't blow smoke up my ass by acting as though I'm going to some, like, little fucking Pueblo in Juarez. <laughs> you know? Like, uh, it, you know, and I, I, you know, I have some fucking ancient gnarled Mexican woman painstakingly knuckling away at the tortillas and shit because that's not happening you're getting that's, it from we should make a restaurant or, the, uh, we have yeah. an ancient Mexican woman oh yeah, yeah so, all right, so make a chain restaurant right yeah but we get like all the abuelitas and shit like that yeah yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and we just have them like specifically as workers 
We just not you just put them in the front window at the tortilla station, and just get those old whores just making <laughs> tortillas all day long. Well, I mean, like they won't know any, but if paying minimum wage, like as they're they're seeing now enough, they'd be like, yeah, oh, yeah this is fine. if they try to get away, you just slap them on the hands and yeah. say, I say no, say I say, you know. That's not sense. Yeah. You spray them with water. Abuelita, mira, mira. You know, <laughs> just be a real fucking asshole. <laughs> Jeez, but up until their parents come to see like how it is, but so here's the thing. So the 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 shrill is we pretend like it's like a like a retirement home, so to speak. Oh, so we shove them in the back playing fucking park cheesy or something when the kids come to visit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Have like the old like fucking Spanish music and shit playing around. <laughs> we'll have a, 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 a tiny a tiny collection of mariachi yeah. records. Well, what we're really yeah. paying for is just to, is to kind of keep like the abuelitos away. <laughs> the other ones. Yeah, the yeah. other ones because those are the ones, like, basically, like, the dudes are the ones who go more senile faster. Yeah, okay. Is this a phenomenon? Yeah, it's a phenomenon. Uh, a specific Spanish one or just an old people thing in general? I don't know. I've never seen any white Call old me. people. <laughs> You've never seen white old people, Dude, period? Dude, we were like this. Like, my first interaction... We, right, when I was in... From middle school to high school, we've only had one white person. Who was that? It must have been a special occasion. Ah, uh, what was his the, name? The, the, the Blanco in the Mist, you know? Yeah, no, he was a complete fucking weirdo. So, like, my interpretation of white people was basically, <laughs> like... Just a bunch of like weird shrills, so to speak. <laughs> so that's why you, that's why you hang out with me now. It's because that's nah, your estimation. Nah, of you're, nah, you're special. <laughs> oh, thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Excellent. Oh, mijo. <laughs> no, so it's, okay. So so between middle and high school, there's only one white dude. There was, and only you, one there was just no white people in your neighborhood. No. Right. But well, I mean, like people who we assume are white, but they're like actually like Cuban or something like that. Like, yeah, uh, we had one kid. Uh, he was half white, half or not half white. He was a uh, half Russian, mm-hmm. half Cuban. Russian still white. No, I, <laughs> well, I know, but depending on who you talk to, yeah, if yeah. they consider the Slavs white. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go really far down that fucking rabbit hole, but no, I think it's interesting, <clears throat> like like what type of white you are, like if it's between like Irish white versus like oh, Russian yeah. white versus like just like any other Eastern European white versus like British white. Well, we were just having that conversation the other day about uh, like you know my family had all those Spanish exchange students from Spain, you know, hmm. uh, and how you know whenever they were filling out forms and they would have to fill out race on the forms, they would always say that they were Caucasian. Yeah. And it was the Americans who were like, uh, are you sure about that? Because you're speaking Spanish to me. I learned Spanish when I was in middle school. <laughs> no, it just, it, uh, there, it always, it does blow a lot of people's minds that there are just like white Spanish people. Yeah. Like, like there's a lot of those. Like, no, they expect, they expect every yeah. single one of us to be brown. Yeah, you got like the Argentinians and you've got like, I've met a lot of those like super light skinned Colombians mm-hmm. who are just like straight Spanish descended and. Oh, yeah. And, Never got with any of the Indios or anything. It's it's uh, from what I saw of it, I didn't really have like a like a hundred percent firm understanding of it. But yeah, uh, for the most part, they're kind of like join up until it becomes like a family matter. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, like I can hang out with the other people. Well, I was wondering because you know, it was weird when I was in the army because I never realized that the whole like I. <laughs> I always thought the, like, light-skinned versus dark-skinned black dude thing was, like, a meme more than anything. I didn't realize that was, oh, like, a thing that people had serious issues with. Because, you know, I never I never heard that around high school or anything. Then I get into the army and I hear guys talking about well, it. Well, I mean, like, how was your high school? Was it, like, what was it? Was it, like, half white, half Spanish? Was it mostly uh, white? I would say it was probably, like, half white and then half everything else probably quarter black quarter spanish and then you know we had the three asian kids like every high school outside of california has. yes basically yeah you know? so but so i found that weird so i i'm wondering is there something similar that goes on especially for the colombians with like dark skin colombians versus light skin ones we don't give a shit for the most part i mean it depends on the family where like some of them are like oh he's negative you don't touch negros. Oh yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, I see. Like it's not so much like a, like a hate thing, but it's more like a scared thing. Gotcha. I mean, that's basically like every like, for the most part, like every Spanish racism thing. It's not some like like 
Well, you guys, you guys have more problems with like different nationalities than like racial stuff. Like yeah. all the infighting between the different South. That's American everybody. Countries. Everybody, like everybody, like sucks shit. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, like if it's like Spanish people versus whatever, like dumbass race that <laughs> decides that. Oh yeah. Which isn't to say that fucking Spanish people like are superior in English. Language. I mean, they clearly are, but that's not what he's saying. <laughs> Based on eating bende abaisa with you and shit, I would assume that they. <laughs> oh man, you would think, right? <laughs> yeah, no. definitely. No, no, nah, because they'd be like, "Oh, Colombia, where's that at? Is that in? Uh, is that next to uh, Spain?" Just say yeah. Yeah, it's basically the same as Portugal. Fuck it. Sure. <laughs> Sure, like, just the lack of geography is fucking astounding. Yeah, dude, I've heard so many people say, like, that's such a a classic, like, criticism of American education is people not knowing geography, but, like, it's so weird because geography was always one of my favorite things as a kid, and my geography is still, like, pretty fucking good yeah, now. but you're different because you had to travel at some point, so, I mean, like... I, I traveled, you, but I was just really into maps and stuff as a kid. I really liked memorizing that stuff, like... Yeah. A, as you can see, I didn't get laid till after high school, as you can probably Classic, guess from this yeah. conversation. Um, but no, uh, I, I always found that shit really interesting as a kid, and just like, especially because uh, back in my my home growing up, we actually had a really old globe, uh, probably like nineteen seventies make that mm-hmm. had like the USSR and all the like Balkan countries represented yeah. as part of that. So I was always interested in like shifting national lines and shit like that. So it's always weird to me when I hear the shit like ninety uh, percent of Americans can't find a rock on a map or something. And it's just really hard for me to believe as a guy that's always been into that and always been around people that were into that. You know? Yeah, you see, it's different for me. It's different for you because you have the knowledge of where Iraq is at, like the whole like Middle East, and like you like you have an idea of where it's at. Like you could just like pinpoint, be like, ah, oh, Iraq is like somewhere around here. It's the one with the really sharp slanty edge. Yeah. I, I know based on the contours of the lines around the country. <laughs> Give me a blank map. It's like, oh, I remember that Iraq has that weird southern slanty edge. Yeah. So there but it's there. like, it's like, like, all right, so just think of it like this. So fucking walk outside. Let's, let's say that we go, to, we go to like fucking, uh, what, Cadoba or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Publix or whatever the fuck, Walmart. Yeah. All, right, all right, perfect. Walmart. Everybody knows what the fuck Walmart is. <laughs> so go into a Walmart and have a map. Ask just a random ass fucking person. Oh, where's Bolivia? At? I don't know. What the oh, fuck I, is that? I. To be fair, I'd probably have trouble with that. <laughs> you see? Or ask them like, okay, uh, where's Argentina? Or Argentina? At? That one I can do, no yeah. problem. But ask them like, you just ask them like a country that like isn't really like a huge. Uh, I think Turkey would thing. be a good one. To Turkey's ask a good one, too. Because it's like Turkey is like super obvious if you know anything about history or geography. But if you don't care about those things, you'll never find it. Yeah. You know? Like, you can't, I mean, you'd be shy. You could also ask them like Greenland and be like, oh, shit. Man, people not knowing where Greenland is. Jesus Christ. Dude, you'd be surprised. Like people, what was it like the people who I worked with before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they didn't realize that... Um, that Canada was split up into provinces. They thought they were just states, like everything else. Man. Yeah. And that's would, that's like really basic or, shit. Not or when know. you hear the the president of Canada, it's like no, it's not the president. It's yeah, it's the prime minister. Yeah. Well, it's a, although I will say that I was I'm apparently a fucking idiot because it wasn't until recently we were just talking about this like a couple weeks ago uh, about the uh, the Canadian province of uh, Nunavut. Yeah, so, uh, okay, so I didn't realize this until I watched, like, a Vice documentary on it. So, apparently, none of it, or none of it, is something <laughs> along the lines of that was established, I want to say, late 90s or early 2000s as an additional province. It's basically a carved-off chunk of, like, the Northwest Territories and mm-hmm. stuff, and uh, the idea was that it was going to function as a theoretical, like, Homeland, sort of the equivalent to Indian reservations here in the U.S., yeah. but for the Inuit population up there. And unsurprisingly, it's a horrible, unfunded disaster of a fucking province. Yeah. But I it just is... like here. It is a... <laughs> we live in Florida. It's not that bad. No, not like here, but like I'm talking about like in the United States where... Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, what was this, this, uh, the, the stat on it? It was uh, the most undereducated and under... Funded, no, it's uh, Mississippi. 
It's always Mississippi. No, that's the state, but we're talking about, like, race. It's the Indians. The Indians. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, Native American fucking welfare is a goddamn disaster. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was super weird that apparently a whole new province formed in Canada and just everyone neglected to tell me, <laughs> you know? It's like, I, I thought that it's, you know, at least on a blurb on Fox News or something they would mention it, but maybe it's not important at all. Yeah, I, that, I mean, I didn't know about it until right now. I was like, I didn't even know there was a new province. Well, I mean, it's the newest. I don't know how new it is. I'll definitely have to look it up after we're done recording, like, exactly when it was formed. Yeah. But I was just watching... Uh, this was back when we were in Germany, actually. I think that I watched the uh, Vice documentary just kind of talking about the problems that it was facing. Mm-hmm. And they're like, really high crime rates, a lot of poverty, shit like that. Because it's a fucking garbage section of the Northern Territories that they carved off, which you can't fucking do anything with. Oh, God. So everyone just gets drunk and commits crimes. That's all that happens. Like That's fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you- you, you make a fucking province specifically for the native people of your land, and it just goes to shit. Yeah, it's a fucking disaster. Which is definitely, like... I, I, I like seeing Canada do that, because it really feels like something that the U.S. would have done, like, in the 1920s. But you don't hear about it as much, just because it's not a, prop, it's not a prosperous fucking province. Well, you're not going to hear about it because it's Canada to begin with. It, like as far as I know, it's not like Trudeau is up there fucking doing any favors to know, but <laughs> like I, I don't know. That's that's we keep our degenerates at. Like the people like <laughs> basically the people who don't belong. Oh yeah, well it used to be in Canada it used to be Labrador. because um, there's a, a Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, and then so Newfoundland's is a big island on the east yeah. coast, but then Labrador is the section The of, East Coast of the West Coast? No, it's the East Coast. It's the East Coast of Canada, definitely. Because I've been there. Oh. Yeah, so Newfoundland's the island, then Labrador's the section of the mainland that's carved off. And I was talking to someone from Newfoundland there, I was like, well, you know, I hear about Newfoundland a lot, but what's Labrador like? And they say, uh, it's... (laughs) These are... I think this is a direct quote from who I asked. Yeah, they're really big into alcoholism and rape. (laughs) It's like... In Canada, that's what Labrador is best known for, is uh, drinking and rape. Like that's that's apparently the thing up there. Holy fuck! So so as a result, I've always come to imagine Labrador since I've never met anyone from there. Yeah. But I've met several people from Newfoundland uh, that uh, it's sort of like a uh, a fucking snake Pliskin like escape from L.A. type situation. It's like a giant prison of a province oh. where all the all the drunk rapists are kept <laughs> from Canada or some shit. Like I don't know, man. Jesus. Okay, now I got mixed up. I, I haven't looked at fucking Canada like geography. <laughs> I haven't at looked at it. Usually, I spend you know a couple times a week. I'll just spend some time looking at Canada. You're like, oh, oh. That's right. That belongs there. <laughs> Vancouver's looking pretty saucy right now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Vancouver's always looking saucy. Well, yeah, because it's featured in like every movie. Yeah. You know that's that was actually uh, an interesting, another interesting thing I was reading about. Uh, is how Vancouver, because of, I, I think it's due to like arts tax policies or something, Vancouver has just become the standard city used for like any urban setting in any movie. <laughs> like, uh, it, because it, apparently it's like generic enough to kind of, <laughs> but not in a bad way, because from what I've seen, Vancouver is very nice. Yeah. But uh, it's generic enough to stand in for fucking New York, Seattle fucking San Francisco, anything. So you can just splice in B-roll of major monuments and stuff, but then all the, like, on-the-street shit and just happen in Vancouver. It's all good. <sighs> I, I like how Vancouver is basically, like, how you just described it as the normalist fucking city Yeah, it's normie, in the it's world. normie HQ. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Well, what, do you, what, what is, like, the normiest city you've ever been to, you think? Um, just, just, like, zero. Probably Orlando. Like. Really? Yeah. Well, like in the suburban no, that, part that's, of Orlando. That's pretty fair. Orlando yeah. is, I mean... Like, you have, like, you, like the like the <laughs> real, like, um... What the fuck do you call them? LB... LBGT? LBGT. I, think, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm I not, mean, I well, that's, that's going like to be that. any major metropolitan yeah. area is going to have a big LBGT community, But, like, me so. thinking about it, like, driving around, like, Orlando and stuff like that, at least when I was younger, up until, like, 1820. Yeah. 
It was like, it, I just felt like Orlando was the most normy city I've ever been to. It was like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, I would love to live in Orlando. It's too expensive. It's a fucking nightmare housing out there. Yeah. But, well, you know, Orlando's kind of interesting to me just because it's like, you see, I can't even think of it as normy because it's a city that's so swallowed up by Disney. <laughs> you know, everything in Orlando feels like kind of a satellite of Disney in some way. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, if, if that's your that's your major thing, man. That's what brings the fucking money. That's why Orlando's Orlando's yeah. with Disney. I mean, that's why. Uh, I mean, that's why Kissimmee's Kissimmee. Remember, we were talking about the <sighs> the weird mechanics of Kissimmee, Florida, and how nobody actually lives there and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's because the, everybody thinks Orlando. Um, yeah, so because Disney isn't technically in Orlando; it's in it's Kissimmee. Kissimmee. Yeah, but you see me and you pronounce it differently. I pronounce it Kissimmee. And you pronounce Kissimmee. It Kissimmee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's. But Kissimmee is like a, a fake city basically created by the Disney Corporation. Kissimmee is basically where Disney's at. And then uh, Orlando got the popularity because it's so close to Kissimmee. Yeah, yeah. Everyone just hangs out there. Like, all, all the people who work at Disney are commuting from Orlando or one of those shitty yeah. surrounding suburb tents. Let me tell you, if you ever visit Florida, feel free to go to Orlando. But let me tell you, there is nothing within <laughs> 30 miles of Orlando in any direction. Basically. Be, dude, all those suburb towns, because, you know, I, I go out to uh, Winter Haven somewhat mm-hmm. regularly. What a fucking shithole, man. <laughs> it, it's interesting because, um, you know you know what Orlando is? Orlando is sort of like the Austin, Texas of Florida. Gross. Because it's, it's this center of, like, oh, you know, we, we got an art community and it's pretty liberal and chill out here, just surrounded by redneck white trash. Because if you go anywhere else around Orlando, you're going to end up in one of those fucking, like, guys who are clearly nude except for denim overalls <laughs> type dudes who you'll see walking through That's the Walmart so and shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Why those that? I, I assume the same Walmart they're showing up in. There's like, no way. Because I was out there. I was in Winter Haven hanging out with some friends, like, last month or something. And I saw a couple of those motherfuckers outside of a Publix. Just, just hanging out, just, just shirtless in the uh, denim overalls and stuff. Just kind of four hundred pounds. Have, it, pounds. Ha, ha, yeah. have the nipples kind of like sticking out, like in between like the fucking chassis and shit. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely. Uh, like, well, you know, like the little rings where the straps connect. You see, I, to, I, I can't wear those now though. Like, if I, even if I wanted to. Nipples too sensitive. Well, a my nipples are too sensitive. And B, <laughs> I have like, so like my nipples like around like. Like it's like short hair, short hair, and you have like this super massive long hair. Oh, it's but like yeah. yay big. It's like you gotta pluck them. I do. You gotta you gotta pluck those nip hairs. Yeah. Man. So every time I yeah. pluck them, they grow back even longer. Oh, that's not how it works. That's how my body works. That's how your body works. I'm a growing boy. You're, well, <laughs> you're also Spanish, so you're just hairier by default. Uh, it's like a fifty-fifty crapshoot. <laughs> I got, I got the, I got the. Oh, depending on what chick you ask, you got the right end or the wrong end. But you know, you've got the so you've got the overalls. You've got the the, the got tandem the, straps connecting to the main uh-huh, body. And then sometimes my, my nipple hairs would get like caught in the fucking like the. the but this strap. is what you do. You arrange it so the little the little like metal hook piece. It's just right over the nipple, so it's like a little window for it to peek it'll out. Still, it'll still catch him. Look. Here, it'll still catch. He is. He is now lifting his shirt to show me his nipples. Let me see. I no, no, they've all grown. Like, oh, there it is. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's a powerfully yes. long nipple hair yeah. on you, Brian. Thanks for, thanks for letting me know. We should definitely convert this to a video podcast, <laughs> just for the sake of shit like this. You know. Yeah, at some point, if we get more viewers. <laughs> you, want, you want to just, well, uh, you know, because we, we do the, like, the still image on YouTube thing, you want to just like take some camera phone shots of your neck <laughs> and just I'll, just, I'll just plug them in there no, as like think, a reference. No. Or would you prefer to leave it to their imagination? No, I prefer the latter. Well, I mean, whatever they're imagining could be way worse. Ooh. Just just big old gross pepperoni nips. Just There could be like weird, like fucking like tiny, like Asian nipples, but on a dude. Oh man, and it's just hairy all around. It's like, oh, like, oh man, the nipples really great, but I'm a fucking Asian woman, <laughs> and you just happen to have like the disgusting disfiguration of fucking Asian nips on a Spanish dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know that that brings us back around to judging people on their nationality. It's not about it's not about their nation. It's not about the content of their character. It's about the content of their nipples, <laughs> and that. 
That is how we, whether we determine whether immigration is okay. Man, David Kim have, you know what? What is it? So what? The bigger the nipples, the bigger the dude. Is that a thing? I don't know. Look at Brent. you're just proposing it as an yeah, idea yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I think of it. Look at Brem. Remember Brem? Yeah. Oh, no, but it was Long who had the pepperoni nips. He had the huge nips. Yeah, but he also tried to overcompensate. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he just had a small dick. <laughs> it's always a possibility. It's always a possibility. I did manage to finesse him by uh, flipping a PS3 to him and making like a hundred bucks in the process. Ooh. Felt good, man. <laughs> that guy was a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> just finesse that bitch. Finesse that fat little pepperoni nip asshole. Nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, after her, her discussion of various nationalities, nipples is done. It's probably a good good time to close it down after a very productive discussion on undercover boss and yeah. Baja Fresh in particular. From undercover boss to pepperoni nipples. I fucking love it. Hopefully, that's next on our menu. Pepperoni nipples. Oof. We'll write in some letters. Uh, <laughs> All right, so until next time, I'm Noah. I'm Brian. And this has been Just Like Family. Thanks for listening, guys. Just like family. Just like family. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Uh,